Is your seat? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Lefroy. And reading. Yes. <laughs> I've been looking through your book of the wood. Mr. White's Natural History. Oh. How do you like it? I cannot get on. It is too disturbing. Disturbing? Mm. Take this observation. <clears throat> Swifts on a fine morning in May. Flying this way, that way, sailing around at a great height perfectly happily. Then, then, one leaps onto the back of another, grasps tightly, and forgetting to fly, they both sink down and down in a great dying fall, fathom after fathom, until the female utters Yes? The female utters a loud, piercing cry of ecstasy. Is this conduct commonplace in the natural history of Hampshire? Your ignorance is understandable, since you lack, what shall we call it, the history? Propriety commands me to ignorance. Condemns you to it. And you're writing to the status of female accomplishment. If you wish to practice the art of fiction, to be the equal of a masculine author, experience is vital. And uh, what uh, qualifies you to offer this advice? I know more of the world. <laughs> A great deal more, I gather. Enough to know that your horizons must be widened. By an extraordinary young man. By a very dangerous young man. One who has no doubt infected the hearts of many a young, young woman with this soft corruption. Read this. Hmm. And you will understand. When the philosopher heard that the fortress of virtue had already been subdued, he began to give a large scope to his desires. His appetite was not of that squeamish kind which cannot feed on a dainty. I've never tasted it. He's not tasting this. Day.